You're regular. So you're yeah. regular this season. How has that been different from your past experience? Um, you know, the, the shift from being recurring to regular, it hasn't been that much just because I always was kind of treated like a regular, which is not a normal scenario on every show. And I just happened to walk into like an amazing cast and a great creator who always made me feel like I was uh, a part of the family. And I guess, I mean, I have been here since episode one, so um, so it does make a little bit of sense. But um, yeah, I guess I just, I work slightly more and I'm now stationed up here in Vancouver. So I have like an apartment. I'm not just coming in and staying at a hotel. Um, but I do go back to LA a lot and I'm probably the one that goes back to LA the most out of all the cast. Um, but I, I kind of have it down to a bit of a science now, so. Since you have more work, are we going to see Peyton have kind of a subplot? She had something like that in season yeah. two, but that was kind of briefly touched upon. So, like, are we going to see an expansion of that? Yeah, you are. You're definitely going to. Um, you're going to see more of her in her work environment, which I think is great. Um, a lot in the apartment, just because now she's been living with, with Liv for a while now. She's been moved back in. She's no longer couch surfing at, you know, Major's house. Um, you're also going to see the love triangle between Blaine and Robbie and her. Uh, that's going to be played out throughout the whole season, pretty much. Um, we're now on episode nine, so we have a few more episodes to go. And um, and so far, like the the love triangle has been great, and I think it's been really um, something that fans I know are looking forward to. Just whether they're for Peyton and Blaine or Peyton and Robbie. Uh, they'll definitely get both sides of that and be satisfied on both sides. Who do you think she should end up with, just you personally? I think Robbie. Um, that's probably just because, like, I'm I'm married, and so I, I'm thinking, oh, like, be with the person that'll be your best friend forever. Um, and I do think that, like, they are really well-suited together. I think they have a great sense of humor. They have this banter and this friendship, and um, and I think that I think that Robbie really does care about Peyton, you know, even though he's been hurt many times by her, um, I think that he still keeps coming back because there is this inevitable attraction there. I think her attraction to Blaine is more on a physical and sexual level, um, but I think the more that she gets to know him, the more she understands his past and sees that he's made bad choices because of the type of home that he grew up in and that you know, he grew up in an abusive environment, and so he was kind of a product of that. You said that she kind of sees Blaine sort of more from the physical component initially, but at the end of the premiere, season premiere, uh, you know, she does kind of call him over to play Go Fish, so she sort of relies on him as that emotional support, that crutch. What, what's going through her head to get her there, to say, okay, I'm going to call him up because Robbie's not answering? Like, I think it's a bit of... I'm being rejected by Robbie, so my next option is is this guy, um, which I think is is something that we all we all do. We kind of sometimes have that like backup person that you can go to that you're like oh, I can rely on them as well. Um, and I think it's obviously not the best quality in her that she knows she's kind of playing with fire, but is is doing it anyways. Um, but I think she's in in a in a dark place. I think she is traumatized from obviously what's happened. And she feels betrayed by by Ravi and the way that he's kind of handled this this relationship between the two of them. And that he kind of keeps wanting to start the relationship and then kind of gets scared and backs away or makes a little mistake or doesn't tell her about something and then it, it ruins everything. Um, we're also going to see a little bit of, of Ravi's past in, in his relationships and dating that is going to come into this season, which will also be, I think, interesting just to kind of see... Um, someone that he's had a little bit of a, of a thing with, and that, I think, upsets Peyton as well. So Peyton and Liv have had some ups and downs in their relationships over the couple seasons. Where are they at the, at the beginning of this season? And They're in a really good place at the beginning of the season. I think because everyone now knows about her being a zombie, I think she um, doesn't have the anxiety as much of having to uh, keep that from the close people in her life. Uh, you know, the one thing that I think becomes difficult is the fact that Peyton begins openly hanging out with Blaine and having him over to the, the apartment that they share, which is a little odd and awkward for, for Liv because it's kind of, it's, it's kind of blurring the lines of boundaries for her. And so I think she, um, you know, she kind of, she kind of, uh, 
warns Peyton to to truly think about what she's doing, and you know, and says, "Look, like I know that that you're having fun and all, but like there's there's bigger problems that we're trying to handle here, and maybe this isn't the best way to spend your time." And and I think Peyton is is hurt by that because she knows that a little bit of that is definitely true, but at the same time, she's kind of mad because she's like, "This is the person that I care about, and I truly do think that." he has changed and he's not the guy he once was. So uh, it's interesting. It, it, I think it's more good than there is bad, but as, as the season goes on, I think that's when, when Liv starts to get a little bit more frustrated with Peyton. I was gonna say, we see how most of the characters feel about Fillmore Graves, or some of them in the, mm -hmm. in the first episode, but we don't get as much from Peyton. How is she feeling about the arrival of this new um, entity on the scene? I mean, I think she's kind of split. I think she understands that the zombie community might not be completely welcomed with open arms, but she also understands that um, that the secrecy of, of keeping that community safe also makes sense. So I think that she's skeptical. I think that um, she understands why Liv needs to kind of partner up with them, but is also like, don't get too deep in, into it because maybe there are bad intentions behind, behind this uh, corporation. Does she get involved at all with some of those characters in the Fillmore Graves world? Um, she doesn't. Uh, you know, she's she's kind of um, she's kind of left in in her office and dealing with uh, cases and and a, and a case actually that Babineau and and Liv are both on, which uh, is is great because it kind of brings together another thing that they can kind of try to dissect together. Um, but yeah, she doesn't really have much in contact with the Fillmore Graves people. She, it's, she's, her storylines are, are definitely uh, disconnected from that. Is there a brain that um, Liv has that Peyton um, gets to kind of play with or have interactions with that's this fun? Um, yeah, the, um, I'm trying to think what's one of my favorites. Uh, honestly, I love this, this episode, Brain. Can I talk about it? Uh, yeah. Is that fun? Okay, I won't go into too much detail. Um, but, uh, yeah, Brain, uh, this, the episode for, for, for what we're working on right now, um, she ends up being the brain of, like, a Dungeons and Dragons master. Um, so we're all forced to play Dungeons and Dragons with her. Um, <laughs> me, Major, uh, Ravi, and even Babineau, which is fantastic. And, uh, Peyton is, like, the only one who's, like, truly not interested. She could really, like, give a shit about this game. Um, and she keeps wanting to just die. She's like, oh, I, I guess my character died, so. They're like, no, you're still alive. She's like, oh, God, okay, I'm still here. Uh, but that's one of my favorite brands that we've had this year. I, I just, I, I, I laughed really hard when I read that script. Um, and it was written by one of our favorite writers on the show, Kit Boss. It's fantastic. We expect to see you interacting with Babino more because obviously there's kind of a natural element of your mm -hmm. office in Babino. Yeah, for sure. Um, we definitely have more scenes together, and... Um, and I think it's also uh, it's also nice to see them working together and not having the uh, the disagreements that they've had in in the past. You know, where she obviously kind of stepped out of line and ended up getting Blaine off, and uh, and Babino being really frustrated by that. Um, I think all of that is kind of blown over now, which is nice. And they're both now realizing, okay, like you know, we're on the same side. We're, we're the same team, which is great. Do we see any Peyton major stuff this season? Because they're kind of an interesting dynamic. They've known each other a long time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they've just been friends for a while. Is that something that happens at all this season? Yeah, um, there's definitely some scenes with uh, with major. Um, not as many as we saw first season. I feel like the most that I probably worked with him was the first season. Yeah. Um, he's now kind of involved in the Fillmore Graves stuff. Um, but uh, but this this episode, we all are playing together the game, so like we have a scene together. Um, and he's obviously kind of in and out just because of still being in Liv's life and having that on and off relationship. Um, so yeah, you'll always kind of see him around, but not, not as much.